right. Hi everyone and welcome to this bonus episode of Engineer Your Career. Um, my name is Jess Frush, I'm the sales lead here at Showcode and um, for this episode I'm really excited to be welcoming back the lovely Amechi Udo who after a hugely successful CV writing workshop which you can check out again on our YouTube channel if you missed it, um, it's now going to be covering the next sort of all important step interviews and how to be your, build your confidence with them. Um, but before I hand over, I just wanted to, first of all, welcome back those who have attended one of these talks before. If you're new here, though, thank you for joining. It's great to have you as part of the community. Um, if you've not heard of Showcode before, Showcode is a tech community platform where you can build, share and compete and even get hired. Uh, we run lots of activities to support you in your career growth, such as hackathons, coding competitions, meetups and workshops. So if you're interested in tech, please feel free to sign up to showco.io. I'll put the link in the chat very shortly. Um, and there you can join our various um, other communities as well within our overall Showco community. This includes Athena, which is for women and non-binaries. We've also got Varsity Code, which is for like students or those at the very beginning of their sort of early, like uh, their tech career. And then our newest community is ProCode for more experienced hires. So I will share all the links very shortly, along with the LinkedIn connections as well. So you connect with both myself and Amechi. Um, just a few little things as well regarding any questions. If you can pop them in the Q&A section, that'd be great. Or in the chat, ideally in the Q&A, it just helps me to monitor it. And um, we will be keep, keeping the session fairly interactive and covering some of the questions some of you have already submitted. Um, otherwise, I'll come back um, to them at the end of the talk um, and get Amechi to obviously answer everything possible that he can. Um, um, but without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome Amechi Udo, the founder of career coaching company Your Career Matters. Amechi is passionate about helping people find and build re um, rewarding careers. For more than 20 years, um, Amechi has been sourcing, recruiting and developing people in the UK and internationally. And in a career including HR recruitment and CV writing, um, Amechi has written, read and reviewed literally hundreds of CVs and also supported lots of people with their interviews. Um, so. Today, he's going to share his key insights into what will help you build confidence in your interviews. So over to you, Amechi. Oh, thank you very much, Jess. A, a wonderful welcome again. And welcome to everybody who's joining this either for the first time or are returning. Please do, as Jess said, connect with us both um, using the LinkedIn uh, connection information later on. So today we are talking about how to build your interview confidence. What we're going to cover is a mindset shift that will help you in your interviews so that you can interview with confidence. We're going to cover four little words to make almost any interview question easy to handle. We're also going to talk about the key time to make an impact in your job interview and easy ways to increase the chances of receiving meaningful interview feedback. I know that's something that's a real challenge for lots of people, um, but also sometimes appears as a bit of an afterthought in their planning. We'll change that today. <laughs> Please make sure you have a pen and pad hand handy so you can take notes. Um, also make use of the chat facility and the Q&A facility specifically to ask any questions. I will probably uh, save the questions till towards the end, only because there's quite an, a large amount of content that may just cover some of the questions and queries you've raised earlier on. Some of you are kind enough to submit those as uh, questions back to Jess and uh, Eglay and the team, and certainly I will look to I've looked to incorporate those within today's session. Okay, let's get moving. Um, actually, just one quick question. If you've got an interview coming up, could you just type Y in the chat? As in the letter Y, just for yes. So we know just how current this, this session is going to be for, for people. So if you've got an interview coming up, just type a Y in the chat. <coughs> just to let us know that, yes, you've got an interview coming up. All right. I know it often takes a couple of seconds for it to, to feed through. So Jess, by all means, if you see some whys in, in there, just give me a shout and let me know. <laughs> Will do, definitely. There's a few coming through now, so um, Brilliant. Brilliant <laughs> oh, here we go. they're all flooding through. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of this, by the end of this session, that will be everybody will have, will be pinging a why in there. Okay. So 
mention a little bit about my background. I was I was actually uh, a little stunned when I was just putting this together and realised, flipping heck, three decades. I started way back when in 1993 uh, in the, in this particular realm, and uh, I've spent an awful lot of time working with people and then formally focusing my work in 1999. And as it says here, working with people globally to help them find fulfilling and rewarding jobs. And obviously the interview process has been a key part of that. Just in case you're not sure, I thought it would be helpful to give you an overview of the different types of interviews that are around. Typically there are the structured interviews where there are set questions. They're sometimes called behavioral or competency interviews. Behavioral ones, they're looking for particular behaviors as the name implies, and competencies, they're looking for a, col a collection of skills um, and they're looking for, for, for examples of, of you giving ex explanations or examples around them. You will usually know what when you're experiencing a behavioural interview or a competency based interview because they will ask questions like, tell me a time when, give me an, arm, give me an example of, um, recall a time when you did. <laughs> They're always asking for examples of a specific behavioral competency. The unstructured interview is where there are no, no set questions. It can, on the one hand, be quite relaxing to be in a, uh, an unstructured interview. However, if you've prepped for a structured one and you then have an unstructured one, it can be a bit unsettling because you don't know exactly where the edges are and the boundaries. Likewise, if you prep for an unstructured one and you have a structured one, that too can throw you off guard because you're thinking, oh, I thought there was going to be much more of a back and forth, a bit of a flow, a conversation. And in fact, they ask me one question and there's no expansion. So just be clear when you're going for your interviews, Get be clear about what kind of interview it's going to be. Is it going to be structured or unstructured? In terms of where and where, where these interviews can take place, they can take place in person, over the phone, via video, they can be panel, they can be group, <laughs> they can be uh, in a formal location or an informal location. So sometimes you might meet, somebody might say, oh yes, particularly in the recruitment world, they might say, oh, meet me at uh, such and such a cafe and we'll have a chat over coffee. You might not be ready for that. You might not have your bearings in the same way as, oh, I was, I'm going to an office, I'm going to an interview room, and we can have a conversation there. They may be part of an assessment center. So they, you might have your interview at the beginning, you might have your interview at the end of that assessment process, or indeed you may have it in the middle. The reason that, like I say, is just so that I've talked about this, is just so you know that there are different types and different structures. Today we haven't had we haven't got the time necessary to go into prepping and preparing for virtual and in-person interviews. But what I will say is on a on a broad level, test your equipment, make sure it all works, make sure your lighting and your background are all good, and make sure that you've got all your notes and materials handy. Now one thing to be aware of in your preparation for your interviews is you may well find companies are looking you up on social media. Primarily, they're doing that to develop the know, like and trust about you. They want to get to know a little bit more about you. They want to determine if you're likable and they want to make sure you're trustworthy. So please make sure you've got your social media in order. They also want to make sure that you have a social media presence. In the modern times, not having one actually is a can raise question marks as to, well, you know, everybody else is on these platforms. Why aren't you? <laughs> They're also wanting to double check your content. You're not you're not sharing stuff that might bring the business into disrepute. And lastly, in terms of privacy management, you may want to check how accessible or otherwise your account is, what's visible and what's not. Some of you may be very skilled and know exactly how to lock down your all your social media accounts, but that may actually work against you in this instance because they can't actually see anything about you. <laughs> so just have a think about that. The balance between uh, totally locked down and totally open.
try to find the middle space if you can. Also make sure you're consistent in your communications across all platforms. There's no point being all buttoned, out, buttoned down and formal on LinkedIn and uh, you know, very little of your personality. Meanwhile, there's you on Facebook doing things that you wouldn't necessarily want everybody to know about. OK, and do, of course, do a quick Google search yourself. Make sure your own name is popping up and there's nothing negative associated with it. Also, that's why it's really good to produce your own content. The more content you generate, the more it's going to be associated with your name. If you've got a name that's particularly um, popular or could easily be mixed up with somebody else, do do your homework, do do your checks. I have worked with clients in the past where they've got a name that is quite common and they found that someone else with the same or similar name has been doing things that certainly they don't want their name associated with. They've taken a simple step of always using their middle initial or they've simply produced an awful lot more content to make sure the right information and the right person is associated with that. So I can hear some of you furiously Googling yourselves now as we speak. <laughs> Make that a regular habit. Do it at least once a month. Some practical things that you can do ahead of your interview. Please research the interviewer and the company. In this modern social media age, you may well come across podcasts, uh, um, YouTubes, um, other recordings that will have that interviewer in. You can go and look at their LinkedIn profile. It will not be scary. Don't bother with hiding that you've gone to look at their profile. Just go and look, see who they are. They almost certainly will do the same or somebody in the company. Do your research on the company as well. If you're going to use their company website, remember that's pretty often pretty much a static site. So it's not updated minute by minute, day by day, week by week. Do a little Google search for them in the news. Have a look at their social media feeds. See what, what's, what's current, what's up to date. It could give you the edge over another candidate because you've literally seen, oh, this happened yesterday and it relates to this position. Here's, here's where I've got experience, knowledge, know-how, and here's how it can be helpful for you. Give yourself the edge literally right up to and including just before your interview as long as you can keep yourself calm you can just check that sort of information out make sure you check out your route to to the interview and or the tech if your interview is over over the uh, internet or via video make sure it all works also make sure any critical updates that were set have all been taken care of before you join Last thing you want is that that all happening whilst you're on the session on your interview. Make sure you've got your clothes sorted out, dress to impress, top half and bottom half, please, folks. If you're having a video interview, <laughs> um, also make sure might sound a bit silly, but make sure your hygiene's up to standard, neat, neat clean, washed. Um, if you're a lover of aftershave or perfume. Please make sure it's the gentle one, the one that doesn't cause people a headache. Um, I grew up in an era where there was a period of time where perfumes like opium <laughs> were uh, very popular. And that in a confined space was actually quite overpowering. <laughs> so have a think. If you're a Lynx lad, love to spray yourself with some of that. Think again. Choose something gentler, softer. Um, the last thing you want is leaving that that, that uh, overpowering aroma in the room. Some of you might be thinking, oh, you know, I'm actually you're over egging it here. Please note, in terms of our senses, our sense of smell is our strongest one for evoking memory. It's our most powerful and it's the most direct. So if you come in, you want to leave a scent of success <laughs> of a really good candidate. So as they remember you, they remember you for all the right reasons. OK. <laughs> um, make sure you've had a little bit of practicing walking and talking in terms of actually just getting prepped for your interview. Um, I remember years ago I was interviewed on BBC Radio London and the taxi driver who took me from where I lived at the time to the studios 
we talked all the way there about a 20 25 minute journey by the time i got to the studios i was ready i was calm i was able to engage likewise get yourself up to speed just talking being comfortable so that when you start your interview it's just part and parcel of what you've already been doing you're already loosened up you're already ready you'll often find that you'll get to talk to personal reception bear in mind that personal reception will probably be asked after you've gone what was that person like how did they pay, behave you're making positive impact from the moment you step foot in the building so please make a positive impression from the outset practice 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 please set up mock interviews you um, video interviews if you like you, you can do those yourself you can ask a, ask a friend family member you can hire a coach me <laughs> you can get somebody to work with you and help you to build your interview skills the one thing i you know i've learned from my own personal experience is the worst place to practice your interview skills is in the interview itself the best place to do it is outside get get used to it get comfortable with it have your stumbles your fluffs do all of that outside it also means when you practice you can check your body language you will probably have already noticed I'm a, I'm a bit of a hand user but generally I've tried to, I, I put my hands either together like this to keep my hands still I place them in my lap or I sometimes will put them out in front of me if, um, or on my, on my thighs, just resting, or just gently place them in my lap. All of these help so if I am going to use my, my hands, they don't come in as a distraction. <clears throat> Too much going on. Instead, they come as an aid to my communication. They support me. You'll also note that I'm endeavouring to keep eye contact with the camera, looking straight at you. Likewise, that's what you want to do with your interviewers. There will be times when naturally you will break eye contact. This is not a staring contest, nor is it a threat, a threat, a test. But you do want to be able to talk with each other. Naturally, we are geared to focus on the head and shoulders area. And we've got front foot facing eyes. So again, our vision is going to be front centered. So please practice your body language, manage your manage and be aware of any quirks, tips, ticks, or unusual habits you might have, and learn how to tame them before you go for your interview. Think about the pitch, pace, and tone of voice that you use. If you're somebody who speaks really fast and and then all the words sort of kind of tumble out, uh, but you always speak at the same tone all the, all the way all the way through with no ed added energy or emotion. It could be quite a dull interview. You want to vary the pitch, which is the, the, the level of voice that you use, how sharp or deep it is. Um, if you are someone who has a low voice, then that often can be quite soothing and calming. So be mindful every so often to change the pitch <laughs> or change the tone. If you've got quite a high voice, as which sometimes happens when we're nervous, double check if you're breathing from your throat or the top of your chest. If you are, bring the breath down into the solar plexus area. Some of you on the call right now, you might want to just literally put your hand on your solar plexus, which is the, the point where your stomach and your rib cage meet. And just while you're listening to me and we're going through this session, just feel your breath there. It's a nice way to keep, keep bring your breath down. If you want to make sure you sound really confident, place your hand on your belly button and breathe from there and speak from there. It brings a more rounded, fuller, powerful, projected voice. And it doesn't matter whether you're a squeaky voice type of person or you've got a quite deep and sonorous voice, or you're somewhere in the middle, when you speak from your, from your belly, when you speak from your belly button, it will put more power naturally 
forward with your words. So for your listener, it's not just what you say, but how you say it. Make sure you've got a copy of the ad or in your CV handy. Practice, practice, practice your, your interview technique. And last but not least on this one, make sure you've got a feedback plan. What do you want feedback on? When would you like it or when can the organisation give it to you? Where will they give it to you? Why will they and you want this? In particular for you, why you want it is you want it to help you develop for future interviews. They may give it because they want to give you feedback on how you answer their questions. Your next interview will not be necessarily with them. So your focus on what kind of feedback you want will be beyond things that have been listed here already. You want feedback on your body language, your pitch, your pace, your tone, your conciseness or preciseness in answering interview questions. These are all things you can utilize going forward. You don't necessarily want feedback on how you answered question 17, which is an in-house question for that particular role. You also want to know how you're going to get the feedback and who's going to give it to you. That last piece is in who is also you can include yourself. Make time for your own self-reflection after the interview and say to yourself, OK, what did I do well? What would I do differently next time? That's much more important to you than whether they give you feedback because it's within your control. A couple of other practical pieces. Make sure you sleep well, you eat well, you breathe, as we talked about, and you have a positive focus. If there's any little gremlins going running around about how you, oh, last time you didn't do as well in the interview, now's the time to switch them off. Say thanks for that. You've been heard. However, you're not needed until after the interview. And literally pop them in a little mental box, pop that box on a little imaginary plane, and send it off it can fly around until you want it back after your interview you want a clear and uncluttered mind best time to make a great impression impression in your interview is in the first five minutes start with a smile <laughs> you might have noticed i didn't just smile with you know that half smile that fake smile I smiled, but it went right up. It crinkled around my eyes. It was an eyes light lit up moment when I smiled and was, welcome, and was welcoming. You can do that through a camera. You can do that in person. So please make sure that's the first thing you do. Also, as, as humans, we are preconditioned with a threat response. We are evaluating any person we meet. Are they a friend or a, a foe? The universal sign that they are friendly is that smile. So help your interviewer out. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> it's very rare that an interviewer won't respond in kind. It's instinctive. <laughs> Likewise, make sure your phone's off, that you're on time, um, that you shake hands. Good firm handshake. No, no wet fish, please. <laughs> If you're somebody whose hand gets a little bit sweaty beforehand, by all means, just gently put your hand against your, against your skirt or your trousers before you shake hands and then shake. Make eye contact. Do actively listen, especially to f find out what their name is. Oh, nice to meet you, Amechi. What we're going to be doing during this interview, Amechi, is going through these questions working through these points, and then Amechi, we're going to ask if you've got any questions. I've used my, I used my name three times there, and if I was on the receiving end of that, I'd be feeling, oh, wow, this person knows my name, they're, they're making this personal, I'm really ready for this. One word of caution, please don't overuse your interviewer's name, <laughs> but do go back to it and utilise it especially as a means of bringing them back or making them more engaged. Oh, Amechi, thanks for asking me that question. As opposed to, oh, yeah, my answer to the question is. Last point, remember, nerves are energy. 
that means you can choose how you want to use that energy. Uh, the great actress Dame Judi Dench is is a, uh, it's alleged that every time she goes on stage, she she actually throws up <laughs> just beforehand. But what she says is she now takes that as a sign that she is ready to go and perform. She's ready to go on stage. So when you get your nervous moment, it's your body saying, hey, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to engage. I'm getting ready to go. I'm ready to channel my energy and take part. So utilize that energy. Speak with confidence. Talk about things like working together. I will. I would. In working in the team on this, I will. This is what I did specifically. The interviewer is really curious about you and you alone. Your role. So you need to be very clear about how you can do what you've done and how you will potentially work with them as an organization. Now, we've got some common interview questions. Some of these uh, you shared with, shared ahead of time. Not only am I going to give you how to answer some of these questions, I'm also going to give you the context behind why those questions are probably being asked. But first, let's stop using the term interview for a little while. Instead, let's call it what it is. It's a confirmatory meeting. First and foremost, we're checking as the interviewer is the person on, on paper the person I'm seeing in person. You may laugh. I have had situations where I've been given or I, for some reason I've got the wrong details. I'm not seeing the person who I, was, who I had listed on my schedule. Likewise, as a, as a recruiter and or as a manager, there have been situations where I've been looking to check is the information that was presented on paper that I think looks good, as good as it, I think it is. I'm checking my assumptions, my biases. I'm also there to do some exploration. I want to know, is the skill, the knowledge, the expertise applicable for my organisation? And lastly, I'm doing some safeguarding. Is this candidate going to be somebody who's going to make me look bad or cause problems? From the interviewee perspective, you're likewise, I'm confirming, is this job or that it's, it's that it should be based on how it was advertised or presented to me? I'm checking, is this a person I want to work with or an environment I want to be in? I'm exploring, is this going to be a company that's going to progress me and take me forward in the way that I want to? And lastly, I'm safeguarding that I'm not going to be joining something that's going to be damaging for my career and my well-being. This is a confirmatory meeting. Both parties are confirming various bits of information. Keep your confirmatory meeting answers relative to the job. You'll get a better understanding of what I mean by this when we start to look at the different interview questions. But make a note, make your confirmatory meeting answers relative to the job, because that's why you're there. It's to discuss your suitability relative to the job. You're going to use core answers. Core is a model that I've developed and it stands for competency so look at the job description see what competency or competencies they're looking for or if it's a behavioral interview then look for what behaviors they're looking for look for the objective so think about a time when you've demonstrated this competency what was it that the organization the team your manager wanted to achieve this can be described at a high level I talked about it in the previous session on interviews, but I'm just going to go over it very briefly now. So the competency was um, uh, cost control. My boss wanted to reduce 
uh, spending by 5%. The obstacle to this was that we didn't actually have a clear measurement or, tra or tracking of spending on a monthly basis. The action I took was to talk to um, our finance team to get a proper breakdown of our spending over the last quarter. The result was that we then had a clear overview of our spending and we could then produce a sensible budget and forecast. This allowed us to then set in place across cost control measures that produced a, did produce the 5% saving that was looked for. The reason why it's relevant for you is that we, we are working, I can see that the business is working in a space where um, cost control is very important. So having a good understanding of costs and how that might impact our business and our performance is going to be key. So we've got I, that example took you from competency to objective, to obstacle, to action, to result, and then relevance. If you are presented with, uh, at the interview stage with, please provide your, your answers using the STAR model, situation, task, action, result. It is still okay for you to top and tail your answer with the additional points that I've shared here. So you can still talk about the competency. Oh yeah, I can give you a star model example uh, of, of what you're looking for in terms of financial management or budgeting. Uh, the situation piece would cover both the objective and the, and the obstacle and task. Then of course the A and the R for action and result would still be in place. And you would be putting the cherry on the top with the relevance piece, these additional R. Most candidates are busily practicing only the STAR technique. They don't then make the link between the result and its relevance for the interviewer and for the organization. You will not be that candidate. You will be underlining the relevance bit. And that's what will help distinguish you from the others. Now, the tell me about yourself question. It's asking you to, uh, you to share who you think you are. It's also checking, are you going to be able to edit, think what to leave in and what to leave out. It's also checking at your confidence about talking about yourself and your preparedness. How ready are you to do, answer this question? Bear in mind what I said, though. Every question you're asked, or almost every question you're asked, needs to be framed with, relative to the job so this stops being a scary question oh my god what do i say how do i say it and instead moves to oh tell me about yourself relative to the job what do i pick from my experience that relates to the job that i want to highlight usually you'll pick two or three things out of your career to say oh i started here i did this the significant bit was I did this particular thing, which relates to this position. I then moved on and I, I did this here. In particular, I did this, which again correlates to, relates to, or is relevant to what you're seeking here. Most recently, I've been doing this, which illustrates my experience of this, which is a key element from what you said, for this role. I haven't gone through every little nook and cranny of my time on the planet. I've cherry picked in reverse chronological order the most relevant information and then underlined why it's relevant for the interviewer. As you can see here, you've got a few other ways of, of responding to it. You can do a professional summary. I'm somebody who's worked in this area for a number of years. The key aspects of that are this, this, and this, which will relate to this role in this way. You can do it in the reverse short order, short career summary, like I just broke down for you. You could do it as achievements. You could say, oh, well, I've worked for a long time or I haven't been working for a particularly long time. 
the key achievements though relative to this position that I've gained are A, B and C and they relate to these areas of the business and the role. You could do it as a logical progression. I started out as an apprentice, I then moved up to this level where I gained these skills, this knowledge, this expertise, which, which maps across to what's been sought here in the role. I moved on through there to this position and this role where I picked up this knowledge or this experience or this know-how, which is useful for you in this regard. And then I moved on to this position, which has given me particular exposure to this, which is useful for you. If you've been working in a number of different areas, the, the AKA job, also known sometimes as a job hopper, you can pull out an underlying theme. Oh, you can see from my career, I have moved around a little bit, um, but the key piece has been, this has always been driven by a desire to grow, to stretch and to learn. The key elements that I learned in this particular position that relate to what you're offering is this, is this, this and this. In this position, I gain this particular knowledge or insight, which will be useful here in this role. And at this position, I gain this particular level of, of knowledge and or information, which will be useful for you here in this position. Whichever method you use, make sure that you're relating it back to the job. And you can ask them, is there anything else you'd like to know? Generally, the answer will be no, and they'll move on to the next question. But if, it, if there is, you've given them the opportunity to ask the question. Remember, you've got to practice, practice, practice. The practice builds your confidence. The more comfortable you are with this as a process, the easier it will be. You'll probably notice, oh my goodness, I actually seem to make that sound so easy. The answer for making it sound easy is I've delivered this and practiced this over many years. <laughs> On balance, keep it 90% professional and 10% personal. And you may even want to make it 95% or even 100% professional and 0% personal. The, person, the personal bit is more about the energy and the, the excitement and the interest that you bring rather than, oh yeah, and then let me tell you about how so-and-so behaved. It's not that. <laughs> you might also be asked, why are you applying? The underlying uh, process behind this is, uh, what can you do that we need you to do? Do you even know what we need you to do? This is a probing question. Um, we're looking to match answers to the job description and then the advert or person specification. And we're listening for your skills, your experience, your motivation, your, no your knowledge. And crucially, we're looking, is there a match between what we are looking for and what you're sharing? When you understand the drivers behind the question, the question itself becomes easier to manage. You don't have to work it out. The next part is what are your strengths relative to the job? <laughs> Behind the question, we're checking, do you really know yourself? Do you know what the pro uh, what our problems are? As I said, you've got to focus on these for the job. You've got star achievements in here. You can use my model, the core, core approach to do exactly the same thing. Crucially, the interview is just double checking. Why are you a good fit for this role and why should we employ you? Using the relevance piece of the core model that answers this last part. You do need to be explicit. Do not hope or assume that the interviewer will pick it up by osmosis. They will not. Crucially, when you leave the room, all they'll be left with is their interview notes. So leave them with, with appropriate information so that when they're comparing or contrasting your, your details with somebody else's, they go, ah, this person has given me solid answers and solid grounds for employing them. What are your, what are your greatest weaknesses relative to the job? <laughs> so we don't start thinking, oh, actually, my greatest weakness is uh, I don't like mice. No. 
relative to the job, look down the job description, see what is there. What they're really interested in as well is your learning when you talk about weaknesses, not the weakness in and of itself. Oh, uh, having looked at the job description, X is, is probably an area, area of weakness. Um, I've had experience of doing this before somewhere else. This is what I learned from that experience. And in doing this position, I bring that learning to bear here so that I could help, I could, I could get up and running more quickly or more effectively. Oh, you've defused any concern in the mind of the interviewer that you are not able to handle stuff, that you are going to need loads of support to get started. Because you've already demonstrated, here's how I, I, I understand a weakness, here's what I've done to deal with it, and here's how I could transfer that experience and knowledge in a relevant way to this role. Five, uh, what will your skills and ideas bring to this company? In other words, what will we be buying from you? You can use either a closed or open core or star example to address this. Okay. A closed a closed star example is very simple. Oh, yeah. Um, this is where I was. This is what needed to be done. This is what I did. And this was the result. Boom. <laughs> that just sits self-contained. An open version of that is to say, state the same things and then say, oh, you can ask an open, you can ask an open question on top of that, such as, "Have I given you enough information? What else would you like to know? Uh, is there anything, or what areas would you like to go into a little bit more detail or depth about in terms of what I've just shared?" That way is opening up the conversation rather than shutting it down. You will have to be the judge of which, which approach is best for you in the interview at the time. Oh, I met you. Yes. <laughs> Apparently, a lot of people are having technical issues with this um, session. So oh. I just wanted to pause you before. Yes. Yeah, we've been trying to sort it in the background, but it seems that the live recording is getting stuck at a certain point. Um, ah. So, rather, yeah. So the team have been trying to work on it in the background, but it seems like most people have been having the issue. Um, oh, and yeah, it doesn't seem I we've had quite a few questions coming through while she's been talking. Um, ah. I'm not quite sure the team of egg laser looking into it, but it doesn't look like um, many people are not having issues, is the general case. So, okay. um, ba -ba -bum. should We're I take the questions? Well, I think if we do the questions, on. yeah, and I think what we'll do is try and get another time. Booked. I don't know what I can only apologize I don't know what's happened because it says everything's live and I can hear you all fine but it seems to be attendees are having the issue um so if we can cover the questions and then maybe find another time to go over the bits that everyone missed um and then if that's okay with you yep sure no problem okay apologies so for that. I, will... <laughs> I don't a bit of a nightmare I didn't know I don't know what's happened there so um but we will speak with webinar jam and try and sort of diagnose what's happened Okay, I will stop screen share and go live <laughs> with questions. So sorry about that. I've been trying to sort you'll see the chat has gone a bit mad the whole time you've been talking. I was trying to work out how many people have been affected, but it seems quite a few have. Um, so it's, yeah, we'll have to speak and um, do a bit of troubleshooting. But there have been some questions okay. that people submitted before it seemed to crash. Okay. Um, so we can be cover the question those. wrangler. <laughs> yeah. So we'll do some of these, and then we'll try and get uh, if we can, if we can find some alternative time with you to redo the session. That would be amazing. Um. But so first question from Luzanne Smith was, how do you respond to a question about gaps in your work experience history? Um. Depending on the the length of the gap. Um. If it's a, if it's a relatively short one. Um. Yep. Yeah, uh, I left company X. Um, I then began began a job search, uh, which has brought me to being in the interview with you today. So the answer yeah. is I was job search. If you took time out for health reasons, um, yep, I had a, had some time out um, 
to get myself back to well full, full 100% health health wise i'm now fit and well and ready to go which has brought me brought me here today to be meeting with you the key point is whatever your reason you always end on which has brought me here to be with you because you want the interviewer not thinking, oh my goodness, you know, are they fit? Or what about their care? Oh my goodness, did that happen to them? Oh. No. <laughs> In the room, please. <laughs> Fully <laughs> focused on interviewing and why I'm a great candidate for your role. Awesome. Thank you. So any gaps, explain them briefly How at a high level. Took time out for care and responsibilities those been dealt with now now ready where ready and raring to go to work with you to be interviewed by you always keep it high level you don't need to go into depth <laughs> awesome thank you for that and then another question from Luzanne was how do you respond to a question on why you want to transition from one industry to another without the necessary educational background thanks very much for asking that question um, the key reasons are looking at this role, it's a great opportunity to bring my relevant knowledge and experience of A, B and C that you're looking for and utilise them to help you achieve some of the goals that you said, such as one, two and three. In particular, I'm excited by, interested in, stimulated because or can see the opportunity that this role provides too. All of these are emphasizing your enthusiasm and interest, <laughs> not just for the sector, but for this particular role in this particular company, because that's the only people who are interviewing you right now. Awesome. I hope that's that's given a, a, a good co coverage of that. No, I think it has. Thank you. And it says, um, question for Monyeka was, how do you respond to a question around salary expectations when the budget was not advertised? Um, and in addition to this, how do you respond <laughs> as a follow up if the figure range quoted is below what is expected? So I think there's two questions there. So I suppose the first one is, how do you yeah, respond to a question around salary expectations when the budget was not advertised? First way to respond to it is you don't respond to it in the interview. You've actually responded to it at home before the interview. Mm. If they don't put a salary, that's their business. What you do is you write down, what salary do you want? <laughs> oh, I want 40K. Fine. Take a piece of paper, write down the salary. If you want, spend time writing down the whole package. I want 40K as my salary. I want a, I want a, a yearly bonus of £1,000. I want health, health insurance, medical, blah, 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 blah. Write it all down. So that when you're asked the question, you just go, yeah, this is what I'd be looking for. I'd like, I'd like it between a range of 40 to 50,000. You've given a floor, you've given a ceiling. It's then over to them what they do with that. It's very rare that you're going to be in a situation where you're going to be talking to the person and they're going to make a decision, bang, in the, in the room. More often than not, they're going to go have to go off and talk to somebody else. And that's 100% the case if it's HR, because <laughs> they don't have the decision-making power. I say that as a former HR professional, not as someone throwing stones. It's just, <laughs> it's, just it's just the truth. Yeah. Um, They've usually got a budget anyway as a company. They know what their floor is. They have got an idea of what their ceiling is. Crucially, just take it as the start of negotiations. Oh, good. You've asked. All right. <laughs> well, let's start. Mm. There's going to be some back and forth. If you are selected, ultimately, then the, there's more power in your hand, you know, so... So guilty TV pleasure of the past Ta uh, take me out you know the power is in your hands Whoosh. they spent weeks months trying to find the right candidate that's you they're not going to say oh no the, the, the money's too high now I mean you know alright there are a few ridiculous requests but in general they're looking at it and going we got this close this close to finishing this mm -hmm. Is a few thousand pounds or a few hundred pounds 
before tax. I, I will stress that, folks. You get all excited. Oh, yeah, I've got some extra money. I've got. Hold on. I've just put it through the uh, HMRC tax calculator. And actually, that's what I get. Yeah. And the company also know hey, then once you're in, you're in our uh, salary process. We'll tell you the next time you get a pay rise in the next year, two years, five years. And it is dependent on company performance. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, yes, you have that look of experience. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we all know salary negotiation. It's one of those things through years of it. You just, it's knowing your worth. I think that's the problem. There's not, there's some no problem. Just, yeah, no problem. <laughs> because there, you know, like I said, said before, I've been doing this now 30, 30 plus years. In the old days, it was really hard to find a salary unless it was advertised as a similar job. Now you go to Glassdoor, you go to Google, you Google a job. It tells you at the bottom and it doesn't just tell you once it tells you it gives you three different examples for this type of job this is the salary range or, or it could be this or it could be this yeah there is no excuse for walking in and going well i don't really know what they're paying <laughs> yeah you can go on the company's website and see oh look there's the job page here are jobs yeah i, I used to I used to work for that, definitely. Yeah. And you can look at what the company's overall attitude or behaviour is. So, mm -hmm. for example, I, I used to help uh, place candidates at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is, is notorious salary wise for, in inverted commas, overpaying. Part of its uniqueness is it says we will pay more for whatever job. So you're going in to be um, a, a cleaner. You're going on on better better a better rate a better salary than you will anywhere else. You go in to be CEO. You're going in on a better rate, better package than anywhere else. So, what's the reputation of the particular company you're joining? Are they known as Stingy and Scrooge and Co., or are they known as Generous Giver and Giver Incorporated? There was a second part to that. Um, what happens if your salary is, the salary expectations don't match? That what they're offering and what you what you want are different. Negotiate, <laughs> and if at the end of the day, no, you know what you will, what your walk away figure is. So yeah. if they say, "Oh well, we can't match you at your at the high end, but we'll give you something else, or we can do a bonus, or we can do <laughs> some, uh, some performance rated pay, or something else," if that still doesn't take you up to the level you want. You know that's your walk away figure. Don't sit there. Oh, but I've missed out because you never had the job. <laughs> okay? You never had it. You not yeah. lost it because you didn't yeah. have it. If, on the other hand, you walk away and, and then suddenly you get a phone call a day or two later, actually we've 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 gone away and we've had some discussions and we would like to offer you this. You will almost certainly find <laughs> you will get your deal. I really yeah. wish for, for folks, if you could get yourself out to a place like Marrakesh as a, as a salary negotiation experience, haggle, haggle, haggle. <laughs> Do the walk away. I don't know about you, but I, I, you know, I've been to places like Egypt and Morocco and Tunisia. And of course, I went with a very British approach. Oh, what's the price? They, they offended. <laughs> What's the price? Yeah, make me an offer. What's your offer? Count off. No, no. And eventually, I learned. Oh, okay. Time to walk. Oh mm. no, no, no! Please, look, come back, come back. We make a better <laughs> offer, we made a better, nice price. It was very rare that anybody went. Oh, right, cheers, mate. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, at the extreme, I remember one one candidate many years ago. Um, He'd been grossly underpaid for what he did, he, and he knew it, and he expressed that to me. And when he told me what he was earning, I went, yeah, <laughs> you have. <laughs> he then he then accepted this new job. He'd been headhunted by me for the position. All great. I'm ready to dance. I'm ready to go. 
just before start starting date. He says, Amechi, actually, I've realised I've been grossly underpaid. I'm getting married uh, shortly, and I'm going on honeymoon in less than a week. I want a significant bump. Can you go and negotiate? Mm. Went back to the client. The client went, okay. They had the budget. They had the time. And they looked at it and said, in terms of cost to go and find our ideal candidate, because we've seen them now. They've got a name. We've seen their face. It's not some purple unicorn out there in the abstract. This person's been in our building. For the money? For one year? <laughs> and after that, we're controlling the salary. Not them. <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. We can do it. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Thank you. There are a few other questions, but I am conscious that um, if the recording is slightly not working, um, I don't want yeah. to waste too much more of your time. So no, no, uh, no. thank you. This has been really, really grateful. We, everyone really wants to have the session again. So what we'll do is we'll do um, coordinate with you. Now I'm just going to speak with the team straight after ending this and just see what's happened. Yeah. Um, okay. And then we've got something else booked in. So, because, yeah, it was going really well until everyone started messaging me going, it stopped. And I'm like, what do you mean it stopped? It's not stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so My only concern was, hey, I've got so much to share with you. I'm really realising I'm running out of time. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, look at the time now. We hadn't even finished the presentation. So, okay, let's um, leave it with me. Let me come back to you um, today with, and we'll try and get this sorted so we can get the session rebooked in. Okay. Yeah. And please send through the questions that are in yes. the in the Q and A, and what I'll do is I will build those into the next one, yes. so that then everybody who's here, you'll know that your questions, within reason, yes. will be answered. Yeah, <laughs> okay. no worries. No, I've, I've taken a screenshot of them, so definitely I'll get those Brilliant. shared with you. And let's get this book, book back in because I think everyone was really excited about it. It's such a shame we've had some technical difficulties today. Okay. No Thank problem. You. Right, I'll speak to you very, very soon. And apologies. Thanks, Jess. <laughs> See Thanks ya. everybody. See you next time. Bye. Bye.